Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'll show you how to make modifications to your artwork so that you can print it on a gallery-wrapped canvas. What is a gallery-wrapped canvas? That's when you create a digital print on canvas and then you stretch it around a wood frame so that it has flat sides around the edges. The sides will vary in width, typically it's around half inch to an inch. So why is this important? It's important because if you're going to cut off an inch around the edge of your artwork, you might be cutting off some important areas like your signature or focal points in the piece. So this piece here, if we go to image, image size, is 24 by 18 inches. So if I were to print this on a 24 by 18 inch canvas with a one inch gallery wrap, I would be cutting off an inch of this. So let's go ahead and estimate what that would be. Let's go to view, rulers and let's drag from this ruler down. We'll go to an inch, and we'll do that from the side here, and we'll drag one more from the top. We'll go down to 17 because we know it's 18 inches, and we'll do one more on the far side. So now we can see what's gonna get cut off here. There'd be a little bit of this leaf on the palm tree, and this leaf here is uncomfortably close to the edge of the canvas. I don't think that looks very good, so I'd like to give it a little bit of buffer room. The sides and the bottom, those all look okay. That could wrap around just fine. So there's a few things you can do to remedy this. The first and most obvious is just to go ahead and create a border that covers the edge. You could also mirror what's there by flipping it, or you could attempt to use content aware fill to fill in any kind of patterns to extend them to the edge. And if you wanted to get really creative, you could go in and you could make it look hand painted by making the edge look kind of painted on. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do those options. Let's start with the first, which is the easiest, which is create a border. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna call it border. And I'm going to go ahead and select white, and I'm gonna fill the canvas with white. I'm just gonna use the keyboard shortcut of Shift F5. And I'm going to double click next to the border layer here, and that'll give me this menu. I'm gonna reduce this little triangle here just enough to where this background goes away, just a tiny amount. Then we'll add an effect at the bottom of the layers palette by clicking on the FX button and we'll choose stroke. We want that stroke to be inside and we want to pump up the size until we reach that little margin there. So that's 150 pixels. We'll go to OK. Now we're still cutting off some of our artwork so we'll need to go to our artwork layer and we'll need to free transform that with Control T. And if we hold Shift and Alt together, we can scale this down from the center and make it fit. Now, as long as you're not working with something that has a lot of perfect circles or like a person's face, you can probably get away with squishing this if you want to. If you wanna just make sure it all fits in there. For this piece, no one's ever gonna be able to tell that I squished it, so that's okay. I'll go ahead and click this check to commit. Then I can hide these guides by doing control semicolon, and we can see what this will look like. So. The front side of the canvas will have our artwork, and then as the canvas wraps around, there would be this black border. You can change the color of the border to any color that you want. If we wanted a white border, we could choose a white border, or you could choose a colored border. Let's take a look at another way to do this, which is to mirror the edges. I'm going to continue using these guides that I made for the first example, but I'm going to add an additional inch. Let's go ahead and resize our artwork by hitting Control T to enable free transform. I'm just going to go ahead and fit it right into this first box here. So now we have a little bit of a border. This is where it's gonna spill over off of the canvas. And then let's right click on this artwork layer and let's choose duplicate layer. Let's call this one top. Let's hit Control T on our keyboard to enable free transform. We'll go ahead and rotate this upside down. Click the check to commit. We'll go to edit, transform, flip horizontal to flip it. Then we'll use the arrow key while holding shift to go ahead and move this up. Let's go ahead and repeat that process for the remaining sides. For the sides, we can just choose Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now let's go ahead and hold Shift and select all of our layers. Then we'll go ahead and merge them together with Control E. Now we have these corners here that we need to fill, so let's go ahead and select the Magic Wand tool. We'll click in the first corner hold shift and keep holding shift while clicking in the remaining squares. Then we'll hit shift F5 to bring up the fill dialog. And rather than foreground color, let's choose content aware. We'll check color adaptation. We'll go ahead and click okay. 
And if we're lucky, it should fill in those corners with something that looks appropriate. Let's go ahead and hit Control D on our keyboard to deselect these selections. We'll also hit Control Semicolon to hide our guides. And you can see that did a pretty good job. Now if you zoom in, you'll notice that it left a little one pixel line here. That's because of that selection that we created. But we can go ahead and fix that pretty easily using the spot healing brush. It's the one that looks like the band-aid. You want to go ahead and size your brush to be about the size of that line. Then you want to paint over that line. If you hold shift, that'll keep your line straight. So just paint all the way up to the top there. That'll get rid of that seam. Go ahead and go across the bottom here. And you may have to zoom in a little bit to be able to see it. And if you see anything that looks out of place, like these two little floating leaves, you can go ahead and remove those using the spot healing brush. You just want to size your brush to be about the size of what you're trying to remove. Now if that doesn't work, you can do a number of things. You can select the cloner brush. You can hold Alt and select a similar area to what you'll be painting over. And then you could paint over it with that, like so. You can also just select those objects that you want to remove. And you can hit Shift F5 and use Content Aware to try to get rid of them. Sometimes that doesn't work either. You can also try using the smudge tool here to just go ahead and push them up off the canvas. Or you could paint over them with a brush. You could select the brush here and then hold Alt to sample that color and paint over that area. Whatever works for you. So now if we print this, it's mirrored on the side. So as it wraps around, it's just going to double the image back the other direction and it'll give a nice natural transition. Now if people look at this really closely, they'll be able to see that symmetry. It's up to you if you want to go through and try to change that up. You're more than welcome to select the spot healing brush. And for instance, you could paint over a couple of these areas to try to make them look a little more unique, but you're risking kind of cluttering up the image and messing it up. So I wouldn't recommend doing that too much. Let's take a look at using just content aware fill to try to fill in these edges. So I still have my guides here. I'll go ahead and hit control T on my keyboard, resize this down into that one inch margin. And then if my layer is a smart object, I'm going to right click on it and rasterize it first. Then I'm going to select the magic wand tool, select the missing area around the edges. I'm going to hit shift F5 and then I'm going to fill with content aware. Now this doesn't always work and it doesn't always get a hundred percent, but in this case it did a pretty good job. I'm going to hit control D to deselect the selection and hide the guides with control semicolon. And if we zoom in here, the only areas I don't like are over here on the left. The right side did a really good job and we might have to clean it up in a couple more places near the bottom. Let's select the spot healing brush. Let's make it pretty big. Let's just paint right over that area we want to fix. I think that looks pretty good because that's just going to be the edge of the canvas. Make my brush smaller with the left bracket key and I'm going to paint over these little edges. And I'll also fix this bottom corner here by painting over it. All right, so I think that did a pretty good job. Now if we were to print this, it would go ahead and wrap around the edge seamlessly and that would look really nice. You're not always gonna get results like this, especially if you have a really busy complex image. It might not work at all and you might have to do more touching up or try one of the other methods in this video. Let's take a look at another example, which would be fading out the edges organically so it looks like you kind of just paint it off of the edge. Go ahead and show our guides again with control semicolon. And then let's right click on our artwork layer and let's duplicate it. We'll call this layer front. We'll call the other layer back. Let's hide the back layer temporarily by clicking the eyeball. And on the front layer, let's hit control T to free transform it. Let's go ahead and fit it within this one inch margin here. Let's go ahead and create a new layer below the front and back layers. And let's call this canvas. Let's go ahead and select white and we'll fill that with white with shift F5. Make sure it's set to foreground color. We'll go ahead and return to the back layer and we'll toggle the visibility of that layer back on. And let's add a mask to that layer by clicking on the mask icon here at the bottom. We'll want a mask with the color black. We can select a brush. Something with a lot of texture tends to work pretty well. So I'm going to go with something like this spongy one here. 
I'm going to increase the brush size with the right bracket key and anywhere I paint I'm going to remove that artwork and show the canvas that's underneath. So I'm just going to do a first pass kind of like this just to remove some of it evenly. I don't want to go past this line unless you want to but I'm going to make sure that I stay on the outer edge of that. You can also tap like so to remove some areas. And don't worry if you erase too much because since this is a mask, we can go back in here and we can add this color back in with white. So let's take a look at how to do that. Let's switch to white. And if we tap with this brush or paint or draw, we can bring that area back that we masked out. Once you're happy with those results, let's go ahead and select all of these layers with Shift, and then we'll go ahead and merge them with Control e Let's go ahead and select the Smudge tool, and we'll go ahead and smudge this paint a little bit to make it look a little softer and more smeary. And you can kind of push it and pull it towards the edge if you want. And just like before, if there's anything else that you don't like, you can go ahead and clean it up. I'm just going to try using the brush this time to paint over that little area, like so, just to get rid of it. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hide our guides with Control semicolon. And let's just zoom in and make sure that there aren't any weird edges here. And if there are, let's just clean them up. We we'll use the spot healing brush, make our brush a little bit smaller. Paint over that line there. See a little bit of an artifact here that I'm going to paint over. And if we return our guides, we can kind of see where this is going to fold over and the paint will spill off the edge of the canvas so it looks kind of more hand painted. Now you could spend a little more time doing this and make it look a little more organic. The best way to do that would be to use a variety of brushes while you're masking or you could do your masking in Corel Painter, which has more organic looking brushes than Photoshop does. Now what if you want to put your artwork on a canvas that's a different size than the original? Let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new canvas that's 16 by 9 inches, kind of a wide format. And I'm going to go ahead and drag in my artwork right into Photoshop here. Now if we hold Shift and Alt, we can scale this up from the center, make sure it goes off of the edge. And then we can go ahead and use the arrow tool to go ahead and move this down. Again, we'll want to go ahead and drag these guides for an inch or half an inch or a quarter of an inch, depending on how much you're going to cut off. Let's say for this piece, this is only going to be a half inch. And we'll just want to go ahead and move our artwork down. And if you want to bleed off the edge, you can do that however you like. Now, if you have something like this gradient or a solid color that you just need to make it expand a little bit and fill the edge of the canvas, here's what you can do. You can go ahead and right click on your artwork, assuming that it's a smart object, and choose rasterize layer. If it's already rasterized, don't worry about that. And then you can choose the marquee selection tool here and select just a little bit of that all the way across. Then you can hit control T to enable free transform and just pull that top edge up like so. Then if you do control D to hide your selection and hide your guides with control semicolon, you can see that did a pretty good job. So for this particular piece, if this gets cut off over here, I don't mind. And if this bottom part gets cut off, that's okay too. And now if I print this, it's going to look fine on a gallery wrapped canvas. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for another Photoshop tutorial.